Call the meeting, uh, Economic Development Committee meeting to order. Um, courtesy of the floor. Okay, seeing none. Uh, discussion regarding the City of Easton uh, Local Economic Revitalization Tax Assistance. Last. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So we got an updated agenda. And um, uh, the, for, right here. Everybody has one of these. The mayor's the mayor's coming. I promise. But we're gonna we're gonna st basically. Now we have. <laughs> Mayor Panto. Yes. Affectionately called so. We, we I've have known him for too long to call one, Mayor. One meeting, please. One meeting, please. Mr. Kraft. Oh. One meeting. <laughs> you have the floor. Well, thank you. <clears throat> so everybody has a copy of this. We just wanted to inform council of our 2018 competitive grant schedule. We're already in process of the community development block grant, um, which opened, and the next one we're moving into will be the hotel tax grant um, competitive round, continuing with the SIP program and the affordable housing program. So you've got the schedule, um, the announcements will be made, have been made, getting put out there um, to the potential applicants. If you have any questions about that, you can let us know now or later. No, thank you for sharing this with us. Of course. This has been out for a while now, right? So this is kind of... Yep, okay. yep. It's, it's been approved. It's ready to go. And like I said, the two, CDBG and the hotel tax one, are coming. Um, we've been asked to give an update on the um, silk mill. Um, we invited those individuals to participate this evening. Unfortunately, they were not available. So I'm just going to read to you um, the update that we've been given. Um, it is was sold in 2014. Um, to date, three of the ten buildings are complete and fully leased. They include 33 residential units and 15 commercial businesses. Um, the construction is ongoing um, the rest, on the rest of the site, and 39 more apartments will be available in May of this year. Five additional leases for commercial tenants have been signed uh, for spaces to be built out into May, I'm sorry, late 2018. Um, the balance of the project, including 90 more apartment units, and up to five to ten more commercial spaces um, will be completed in mid-2019. So the total investment to date by the developer is approximately $21 million, with about $14 million more million to go. Um, and then we were made aware that everybody will have an invitation to an upcoming ribbon cutting in late 2018 or spring of 19. Questions about... Just a quick point. Uh, this was a Keystone Opportunity Zone that this council voted on several years back. Um, unlike the one that's coming up next, this one is a success. Uh, so I'll uh, extend my congratulations to all the folks involved uh, with, with this project because they've, they've had vision, they've followed through, uh, and they've put their money uh, behind the project. So um, kudos to everybody involved, and it looks like it's moving ahead. It is a nice, nice project. Moving on to the more challenging of the second one that we were asked to report back upon, which is um, the Dixie facility in Easton. Um, that has been an ongoing dialogue with the current property owner since 2015 regarding the redevelopment of the property. Um, the owner has began to work um, with the Lehigh Valley land recycling initiative to perform the phase one environmental site assessment. Um, it's continuing on to the phase two assessment and cleaning uh, the cleanup part as part of that um, as a voluntary cleanup process with PA Act II. Um, so we're expecting from their words that the Act II process is expected to be completed this year, um, which will be 
followed up by any other potential remediation and development. But again, this is a much more slow moving process. So any questions on information regarding that one? We may or may not have. <laughs> do, do you know what their goal, their total goal is? I mean, when their completion or anything? I am not, do you? What's so, their uh, what's their phase two? Uh, what is phase two cleaning? So, uh, the, what they're doing right now um, is identifying what the environmental issues are on the site and what they need to do to clean it up. Um, so, I and I can get a more detailed report, but there there's some soil contamination. Um, you know, there's old transformers and things like that. That need to be cleaned up, including Corn. lead they're, paint. You're telling me and they're asbestos. just assessing it now. They're telling you they're assessing it now. I mean, I've known it was assessed for a long time because we went out and bid for lead removal and remediation of things in that site six years ago. Well, there were issues related to DEP, um, uh, outstanding violations, and um, things that did, like there's a in order to go through the Act Two process which is a voluntary cleanup, but then it limits uh, liability going forward on the site, which is very important for developers that um, they get kind of a clean bill of health mm -hmm. from the state that there aren't environmental issues there. The only, um, thing, the, only thing, the only thing I see happening there is more windows getting broken all the time. I don't see anybody in there. I don't see anybody doing any work. I don't see anything. So, I mean, I think they're feeding, well, you, uh, feeding you a bill of that, that was just my question is, like, was there any miles, was there any, um, like, guidelines of um, completion, I know you know, goals, the, any, what their goals were? The current property owner has uh, plans for redeveloping it into apartments, and I think there may be some commercial spaces. But all of that is kind of, you can't do anything until you know what the environmental issues are, is because you can't get financing to do a project of that size. Like, nobody's going to lend you money mm -hmm. until you know what the environmental issues are and they've either been addressed or there's, uh, uh, they're comfortable in understanding how they're going to be addressed as the property is redeveloped. So that's a work in progress and yes. we don't know when the, that'll be abated or no. figured so out? No. The, so the next step, once they have the approved cleanup plan, then you can start targeting uh, federal and state sources for cleanup uh, for assistance to do the cleanup it just uh, again this was a keystone opportunity zone uh, that council voted on several years back unlike the previous project um, I, I foresee no potential way for uh, the owners or anybody that would live there or business um, by the time this even begins the Keystone Opportunity Zone that we put there is going to expire. Um, so at this point, does it even make any sense to keep it as a Keystone Opportunity Zone? I mean, I, um, I can't answer that. You know, I, I think your assessment's right. Like, it takes a while to pull these projects together. Um, when you're comparing this to the silk mill before, you know, one of the things to keep in mind, um, the Dixie plant is privately owned. The silk mill was controlled by the Easton Redevelopment Authority. So they uh, were able to spearhead the environmental component to that property. There was like uh, basically the same process we're going through with Dixie, we went through with uh, the silk mill, um, but because the redevelopment authority was kind of in charge of that. They were able to take care of that before they got it into the hands of a private developer. So that's a big difference between the two projects. Well, they, they call these economic development incentives, but apparently the, the Keystone Opportunity Zone, which is the most powerful one, has had little or no incentive uh, for, for this developer and property owner. So it's disappointing. Thank you. So uh, 
if it's all right with you, Mr. Chairman, um, the city of Easton's here and we can go through the sure. presentation on the alert. Please. Great. <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for taking time to hear about this important program. I know you've already heard it. You know what it's about. Uh, the city of Bethlehem has been approved for this. This is something we're back on our second 10-year plan. So I'd like to introduce Dawn Hart, who's our uh, Director of Economic Development. She can start the project off, the program off, and then I'll, uh, I'll finish it up. Thank you. Thanks, Mayor. Good evening. Thank you so much for hearing us this evening. The presentation is there in the back. There's two documents. Uh, one is this, what I'm going to be walking through. And then the other is the um, information sheet that we give out when people request information about the program. So it's a much more detailed uh, version. So uh, slide two, actually there's two slide twos. The first slide two, um, just an overview of the program. Like the mayor said, uh, it's been in existence for the last 10 years. It sunsetted at the end of uh, 2017, December 31st. So we've been looking to implement a new program. So the process is that we need to receive approval from all three taxing bodies. And we started with ourselves, and then we went to the school district and talked to them and received approval on January 23rd. And we're here tonight to talk about receiving approval from the county, which would be the last step in the process. So just briefly, um, the program is actually one of the, it's the only economic development incentive program that we currently have. And um, I think it's really, it's part of our, well, it's a part of our tool set and it's a really important part of it. So, um, and it encourages obviously development. The difference between what we're doing this time around and what we did last time is um, we're doing a much more targeted approach and the mayor will talk about that when we get to the map page. So the second slide, second number two. Um, so how it works. Um, a property is basically, and you may all know this, but I just want to just want to review it one more time. So a property is assessed um, on its base value, so that's what it's currently providing um, in taxes, um, and we that's the base. Then someone would come in, um, give us their plans for improvement, receive a CO, apply for the um, program at that point, and then um, make the improvements. Uh, the county would then come in and do a reassessment, and the difference between the base and what someone improved it would be the increment. So the first year, there's no increase in the tax base, in that base number, basically to give them time to do the development, assuming that it would only take a year. Um, but the second year, the taxes are calculated um, plus the base plus 10%, and then that increases by 10% for the next 10 years until the 100% mark is reached. So I'm just going to turn this back over to the mayor now and he's going to talk a little bit about the thinking behind how we changed our approach. So we looked at our approach last time when I came into office in 2008, came before county council and the school district and we, we did a very massive area. Uh, the whole Northampton Street corridor, some of the downtown and some specific sites like the silk mill. Um, which needed it, and the, over on the south side, the Black Diamond Mill, which hopefully will go under construction this year. Um, this time we took a little different approach. Um, it was just things are going better in the city. Uh, we're very fortunate about that, and this program has helped. So what we did is we picked out, what is it, 61? 72? 72 properties in the city that really need some type of incentive for them to really either they have asbestos or lead or need some kind of some soil remediation or they're just not even worth saving. So if you look at this map, you'll see that we are pinpointing the properties rather than just giving a big area. Um, again, the reason for that is that frankly, the houses and the buildings along the downtown and, and going out 
North Hampshire Street really don't need that much anymore. So we, we really didn't feel like they needed a tax credit to, to do anything to their buildings. So we picked out the worst of the worst in the city. And uh, as you can see from the list that we'll get to in a little bit, that's in your packet, these are properties that are really rough. There's, they're on, most of them are on our blighted vacant, uh, vacant blighted list. Most of them are not paying much in taxes at all because they've been reassessed so many times downward. Um, so as you can see from um, the next page uh, it encourages us to do these projects we don't have as, as dawn says we don't have any projects or grant programs anymore the state has cut back so much that there really isn't our caps left there's none of those big grants that we used to get so the first one you're going to see is pomeroy pomeroy you are getting uh almost what about 80 percent of their assessed value already it's been about eight years that that project's been done so your 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 revenues are growing um you see what it was like in 2008 and you see what it's like today. Uh, the same thing with the third and ferry fish market. <laughs> no. Lori's going to get one. <laughs> third and ferry fish market. You can see the Oak Steakhouse. Um, you know, two million dollar investment in Oak Steakhouse. So the assessed value is going to go way up. But what was there before? 118, 120. Uh, basically, you could go into that building and look at the sky. And there was no floors. There was no no any any kind of structure. So that is now open. Has um, eight apartments and two uh, commercial properties. Daddy's place. Many of you may have gone there for the great Lebanese food, but it was an old vacant glass place that really wasn't giving us any taxes. Wasn't giving you any taxes either. Like I don't know. It was the assessed value was very very low. One of the biggest ones you'll see over in our South Side neighborhood is where I lived. I lived. I grew up right next to that mill. And now there's a CVS mall. Uh, not only a CVS pro, pro store, but also a mini mall where you just approved the lease for District Magistrate Kapoor to go in. So that's it's being put to good use. Uh, Delaware Terrace, um, which you see on the top left-hand side, is where I grew up, 506 D James Street. Um, that project has been completely restored. Now you say, well, that's public housing. Well, no, it's not. There are 50 homes there that are owner-occupied. So every year they're paying 10% more in taxes till 10 years. Easton Yards was just announced. That project has been dormant for many years. It was boarded up, or, well, cement blocked up, and used as a storage facility. Now we have 70 apartments, market rate apartments going in there with construction to start this year. Silk Mill is something I don't even have to tell you about. I mean, it's over $100 million in private investment, about $8 million of uh, federal, state, and county grants. We appreciate some of the uh, ISR grants you've helped us with and some of the uh, utility grants. But that project is probably going to come online at a value of, I don't know, $40 million assessed value. So it's going to bring us a lot of money, but the, the, the developer really did not need. Page 14 is, again, the same thing. Page 15, uh, unfortunately, there you see the W people who own W Graphics, the, wood, the um, Franklin Fields. They did it. This is the old Sultan Bar. It was the last place in Easton you get a 25 cent beer. <laughs> I wouldn't drink it. But anyway, they, they really they did a great job. They did a great job of repairing this and upgrading it. It's right next to their business on 4th Street. Uh, next door, they did condominium project. And our last one that is we're working on, and hopefully we'll announce something for this project this year yet, is the Heritage Lane project, which um, is looking to be a five or seven story um, project, either offices or residential. We're hoping it's offices, to be honest with you. Wolf Building is another one, uh, same thing. It, will not have been, it, was a, it was your building. It was a huge building. You know you didn't have many offers on it. Well, you, some of you know that. Uh, others, it's, it's just a big building, and it takes a lot of work to fix it. And you've got to remove the, the lead paint. You've got to remove the asbestos and all those things. So if you look at the numbers on, the, on it right now, you're at 11.8 uh, mils. And if you look at the reassessed value of something that has an original assessment of $513,000, it goes up to reassessment of, let's say, $1.8. Your, 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 your money goes from $6,000 in this year without any development to year 10 of $22,000. So it increases every year, which, as, you, as I know from our level of government, it's the same thing, is every year your expenses go up, so every year you have to find new income or you have to raise taxes, and you certainly don't want to do that either. So this is a way of increasing your taxes every year by 10%. Our job is to get these 70 properties done under construction. 
We have 811 Northampton Street, which did come in under the old LERTA program, so that's being done for veterans uh, uh, housing. Um, that's the old school district administration building, and Bob and I remember real well. So if there's any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer. I don't want to be labor to point. You know what the program is. I think in Easton, one of the things that I think the state and the governors talked to us about, both Easton and Bethlehem have always used state grants and state programs to the benefit. Um, we are, you know, every year our assessed value is going up, which means you get more taxes, we get more taxes, and the school district gets more taxes. I'll gladly answer any questions. Well, thank you all. Have thank a great you. evening. I'm sorry, Lori. Oh, Towson excuse Denver. me, Whatever. Mayor. Miss, you're in my blind spot. I know. <laughs> I see you. <laughs> Do you have... Um, people that are already lined up or are people that are ready to invest in any of these specific properties some of them mentioned? they're waiting to see if the alert is passed to do their financial performance um, that's why we sp pick specific properties they're the toughest ones to do um, you know there's no sense in giving let's say Pomeroy's another alerta to do maybe a new roof that's not what we're after here we're after projects that are really tough that are that are vacant that are in deplorable condition they're going to take a lot of money um, I would say for example on the Heritage Lanes building yes we, we have something uh, the, the owner is a gentleman who wants to do the project but has not come to us yet with what he wants to do we have another meeting next Friday um, these projects we we're right now we're very fortunate we have a lot of businesses and offices who want to locate to Easton but we, we have to provide the parking. So the days in lot becomes a really great place to park cars for two years. But after that, we have to start looking at our structured parking again. And just one more, if I can just comment on and add to that, Mayor. I've received about a half a dozen calls since the beginning of the year for people who are interested in doing something and they want to know whether the property is in the new LERDA. And so I've had to advise them that we're, we're still going through the process and we don't know yet, uh, but it's on the list. So they're waiting for me to sort of get back to them with, with what the final decision is. And I've cautioned everyone that, you know, it's a three-step process. And, um, you know, there's a lot of consideration that goes into it, and we know that you're going you're gonna to weigh that. So we're just hopeful that you'll approve it. Okay. I have sure. a question. When you go to the uh, – <clears throat> when, you, when you take an application for somebody that wants to – so is it – they come to the city first? Yes. Can you just explain how that kind of works? Yeah, either Dawn will meet with them if it's a big project, or if it's a smaller project, we're just going to get a permit to, to do the, let's say, the bathroom repairs, the, the windows, the, the exterior. The, the permitting company, the, the Department of Codes knows what properties are in there, and they will let them know, oh, this is an alert program. Assess value, your, your county assessment office already knows it, so it's already on the deed uh, that says that they get a 10% um, Costs increase each year, but it starts at the base. So yeah, there's a pretty, it's pretty well communicated. It but really the, is. the way you targeted this, the map, it seems like you're looking for larger projects. No, there's some small projects. Small projects. We have too. a small mill out across from Cottingham Stadium that's probably been vacant for 20 years, and it's just a small one of those four, you know little neighborhood textile mills that people used to walk to. It's not like the Silk Mill or Black Diamond. It's a small mill. It's probably I don't know maybe maybe 8,000 square feet. So some of them are houses that are blighted. Um, so it's a mixed use of residential and business, commercial. Is, is there a minimum of how much that you need to apply for? There so is a minimum, a minimum in that it can't be normal maintenance. It okay. has to be an actual investment. That in, It's something that would increase the assessed value. You paint the exterior of your property, you're not going to get a, a reassessment. Okay. It's maintenance. Yeah. I mean, they could, they could apply, but if it's not a significant number, it doesn't really make sense okay. to go through all the paperwork to do it. Thank you for helping me understand that. And just, I just wanted to add one other thing, too, between difference between the last program and this program, and that is that because we have such a targeted list, once we, hopefully when we get approval, we'll be able to market to those particular properties and reach out to them and say, hey, you've got this benefit, either do something yourself or sell the property because it's, it's something that's attractive to someone else who might have money to come in to do something. So, you know, we're going to market it more aggressively than the last program. And again, the last program was literally thousands of properties. So it's a big difference. It's, it's, this, is, this is doable. We can, we can accomplish, you know, targeting 70.
Oh, I have one question. Question, Mr. Chairman. You have a you have the Da Vinci Science Center spot where the where the hotel is. You have it for a tourist attraction, new accommodations, upscale condominiums, mixed use. Um, you've removed the hotel. Um, so now, what's that assessed at? Just as a parking lot now? So it's it's, it's, it's it's owned by the city. It's not assessed at all. Yeah, you own it, right? So if somebody it. like say Da Vinci tanks and doesn't do anything, and you decide to sell it to someone to build upscale condominiums or something, where does your tax rate start at? I mean, you start at what you figure starts assessed at the for a parking lot. With the days in hand. With the days in hand, even though it no longer exists. Well, no, because that's the assessed value. The assessed value didn't change. It's just that we're tax exempt. We don't have to pay it. Right. I mean, if Da Vinci moves in, it's completely tax exempt. You That's get nothing correct. from it. That is correct. But you're, you're hope, hopefully marketing that. This is a second plan. Mr. President, we Third always have plan. a plan B. I like that. You know, we always have a plan B. Because that's really smart. I've said from day one, if it doesn't make sense financially for the city, we can't support it. I mean, I've said that from day one. If they hit their 600000 we it's great. If they hit four fifty, but they have to hit four fifty. Right. So those studies are out. They're being done. We get them back in May. And the business plan comes back in June, and we'll see. All right, because that um, might be a really nice spot for someone. That's it's a great a nice, spot. It's nice three spot. acres of prime urban land. And I'd like to see it taxable instead of tax exempt. Thank you. <laughs> Question, Mr. Dietz. Yeah, as, do you guys get any complaints from any uh, properties that are, that are doing renovations that are outside of these marks that, you know, that – you know, X property is getting renovations where I'm doing them, and, and I got to pay the, the full assessment. And no, we, we've we've taken we really looked at the city as a whole to to qualify the properties we selected, and we did miss a couple initially. There was like 68 an hour at 71. We we added those three. I mean, we we did we tried to, and during the process we could add. If we came back for an amendment, we, we don't think we have to. We think we think we covered them all. If they're outside the area, that means that they really weren't blighted in 2018. Okay. Right. And can I just add to that? We did have um, actually one 130 um, uh, North Third Street was one that was left out, and it and the mayor. Um, we kind of talked about this behind closed doors, and I said, "Oh, we really should keep it in," and he said, "No, no, let's keep it out because." It's right in the downtown. It's such a hot property that it's gonna. It doesn't need this. We don't need to use this. So we were really very. I just want to let you know we were sure. really very thoughtful about each property and whether or not we thought it would move with or without the incentive. Yeah. So so I get that. But so so say that property and and I agree with the the theory that it's it's a hot property. So someone's gonna come in and do it. But is it fair to if one of these lots are the ones right next to them and they're getting the the benefit of it? You know, so just say two exact competing businesses wanted to, you know, take over e each slot. This one's got a, a, an advantage over the other one. You know? I don't think they have an advantage because the amount of money they have to invest in that property. The one next door is probably ready to move in and open up your business. The other one probably needs a completely upgrade in codes for electrical wiring, electrical plumbing, and all those other things. So there's a huge investment that has to go into one, one side. It may not have to go into either one of the buildings on the other sides. I mean, we really looked at that, uh, Councilman, because... Obviously, we want to be fair and consistent. We want to be able to answer those questions when it comes to us. But, you know, like that mill, it's in a residential area. The houses around it are beautiful. They're just a good middle-income family neighborhood. But it's been blighted and empty, and I'm sure those neighbors would love to see it done. This might be a little bit of a push to get it done. Okay. It doesn't have any off-street parking, so it can't be apartments. You know, it's, it just doesn't have anything. Yeah, so a lot of the... the you know, the news and all those things that I'm not a fan of and, and not overly excited about the letter, but overall, you know, I think it's pretty I, good. I will tell you that I, 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 I don't disagree. I don't disagree. Uh, unfortunately, developing in a city, in an urban community, is much more difficult. And I did, I did developments in the suburbs when I was with two different land developers. I mean, it's easy. You buy a cornfield and you just put up houses or, 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 or factories. It's a lot easier. There's no need to give them incentives. As a matter of fact, the townships get great amount of monies and capital improvement fees. Right. You know, and you know, we just. I mean, when I was the, my last project I worked on, we did a five and a half million dollar roadway to give to Palm, uh, Forks Township for a dollar, uh, because it was lucrative. It was it was green, um, which I really like. The, the farm, farmland preservation program is really great. It really helps. But I think that's the, that's the difference. At downtown, is you know, for example, just to give you a little. Let's say that building's been vacant. We have one utility, not to be mentioning Med Ed, but they will charge that person. Like for us at City Hall, we paid $124,000 to connect to their grid. Because what we're doing is we're, we're fixing up their grid on all the development. 
Two Rivers Brewing at the top of 6th and Northampton Street, which was blighted and vacant for a long time. Their fee initially was over $80,000. We got it down to about fifty. dollars um, So it's more expensive to develop in downtown where we already have the utilities, but they charge gas. We had a uh, where Magistrate Kapoor is going in. We had a really high end laundromat that wanted to go in there. UGI was going to charge them to get gas from Philadelphia Road into that shopping center, $80,000. It, it, we lost that deal. So I understand what you're saying. We look at every deal and what can we do, what can't we do, because we want to be fair and consistent. Yeah, I appreciate it. Hmm? Uh, sure. Uh, I, Mayor, um, Mr. Kraft's question, just something in my head. I just wanted to ask you. He used an example. If, for, if, for example, the Da Vinci didn't work out where the, the hotel was, or the, the you know, it, it's been leveled. So it'll be, the city has it now, but it's basically flat. And you said if, for some reason, the venture didn't work out, and someone came in. They would pick up that assessment where it left off. But aren't we talking about an undeveloped piece of land versus? You're talking about three acres of land that'll be as valued. I mean, the entire the value won't be the same though, assessment-wise, as, as well, when it had the I hotel would, I would on hope it. Hope it is. I mean, it doesn't have a building on it, but that building was only no I, one I, fifth of the of the land. The land was three acres. Yeah, I'm was, asking you as somebody who didn't understand it. Yeah, okay. It was under assessed to begin All right, with. okay. I, I, yeah, I was just, it, no, it just jogged uh, me when he asked me. I didn't absolutely, go. You're absolutely right. I mean, I don't know what the assessment will be. Hmm. Okay. But all I know is that it does have an assessed value. It's just that the city's tax exempt. All of our properties, and this is something I, would look, I wish they, the county could do, but all of our properties, including Lafayette College, including every church, should have an assessed value. So that when, we're, when LVEDC or our own group is marketing us, we have a value of X for, rather than X minus 30% because we haven't had a reassessment since 1987. If I'm a site locator, I'm looking at the, at the Northampton County saying, wow, it's a really depressed area, and it's not. It's just that our values of our real estate haven't gone up in, in 30 years. It's very true. I, I have one more yet. Um, yes, Mr. Um, uh, and maybe just my knowledge of Lerda, um, still learning. If uh, if I have a place in Alerta in Alerta qualifying zone here and I, I fit into this description, and um, how many bites of the apple do they get? So they want to make one improvement. They want to make another improvement. You know, is it one shot? It's one shot for each place. So if you're going to do a big thing, you can't do it in a couple of different small little things. No. You have to do your thing in one capital project. Right. And then if, if you did another project within that 10-year period, you would get a new assessment, but you wouldn't get the benefit of the LERDA because your LERDA is already locked in at 2018 rates or 19, whenever this project gets started. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. We're, not, we're not giving them more than one bite at the apple. Okay. <laughs> Once it starts, the okay. clock's running. The clock's running. <laughs> they have, they have, and, and they have 10 years, and that's okay. it. Okay. Um, and you were talk, when I walked in, you were talking about the KOZ. And the KOZ was different in that it, its clock ran 10 years after you finished the project. Yeah. Now it has a sunset of 2023. If a project starts in 2020 in the KOZ, it only gets three years, mm -hmm. which we're real happy with. I mean, you take the silk mill, there's a lot of people moved into the silk mill and are not paying any local income tax or, or state income tax or real estate taxes. But the, it expires in 2023, even though phase Three won't be done until the end of um, next year. Mr. Case. I, I had a comment and then a couple questions. Um, first of all, this is significantly better than the old plan. Um, I will make a request of the administration. I would like that question clarified about what happens to the days in property because okay. okay. that's not clear to me. If we if we could get something we'll from. Okay. Um, then uh, I would just. I could tell you that on on we have surface lots that we were going to put up with RFPs. We we get another garage up. We have surface lots that are becoming very valuable, more valuable to put back on the tax rolls. Mm. That would go to zero because there's not been anything on it for 30 years. So the assessment probably went down to just the land value. Yeah. The assessment on the days in, I'm assuming, because it's still there. We bought it for six million dollars. The assessment, the assessment office should have put it in it somewhere around two and a half million dollars. Yeah, which but, is more than what the days in was. But but you could ask to have it reassessed, and it would just be reassessed. I'm against that too. Lot, so. oh. um, but I, I wanted to uh, ask if you could tell us a little bit about some of these larger properties and what are the challenges. Um, specifically, I'm focused on the ones that are greater than ten acres. Um, the iron and metal works. Um, 
you know, I remember driving by that for yeah. years. What um, what are the challenges there? Um, Environmental and, number one. They're, they're, whoever buys it has to do the. They won't even let us on the property to do a phase one. We had some interest, but no one's going to buy it without at least a phase one to see if there's any contaminants. Now um, we just heard about that from the Dixie uh, situation. Mm -hmm. Is there any way that that process can get started from, with help either from the county or your redevelopment authority? Is well, we've been working on it. We, we believe that the city has the right to go on there and inspect the soils and do soil digs, you know, mm -hmm. probes. But we did, no one's going to buy that property without environmentals done first. Okay. Uh, the other one is the uh, Bushgill Drive uh, 10 Acres uh, Recycling Center. What, uh, what are the prospects? That's the other there? side of the East and Iron and Metal. Okay. Um, there's another 10-acre site, Hackett Avenue. Uh, what are the prospects there, and what, what's the issue? That's actually um, where the Huntsman property is. The Huntsman company is going out of business. They announced that they were closing. Oh. Some of the land is in Easton. Some of it's in Wilson. Uh, so we know that that's going to be challenging also to, to do. Huntsman has told us we've met with them. They've told us that, they're going to, that the entire site has been cleaned up. They're going to tear everything down before they put it up for sale. Um, but we don't know for sure, so we put that on there to be an incentive because we're probably going to have some cleanup. Okay. It's um, on our, our, the city of Easton's on this side of the Bushkill Creek. Has Wilson approved it as well, or are they looking they into not, it? I or? don't think Wilson has ever tried to get a LERDA. I don't okay. know. Okay. Um, and I think there was one other one. There's a large um, one on the south side. Yeah. Uh, vacant wooded lot. Yeah. Um, what's, why are we It's between our Neston Heights project on Grant Street and our Highlands project. The city allowed the Highlands to be built without a second means of ingress or egress. So if the 611 is closed for construction or flooding, or there's a tragedy on that street, people can't get in and out of their own community. There is now, we installed about 10 years ago, an emergency gate that does let them get out on Phillips Street. But in our emergency vehicles have keys to that. This is a wooded area between the two. That if we could get someone to, it's topographically, it's it's a nightmare. The the the, the uh, excavating and site costs are going to be extremely high to get any housing there. But it would be great to have, and if and someday I think the city will probably connect it to. But it is it's a connection problem. It's a beautiful wooded area. I used to hunt there when I was a kid, but it, it's topographically, it's it's all swales and valleys and. Stormwater costs will be pro prohibitive. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I just want to comment on the examples. That's some great stuff that happened in the past. So thank you, Councilman. Nice to see you today the, too. Yes, and the president. I mean, it's it was nice to have you guys there because sometimes I don't see anyone. <laughs> yeah. Any no. questions? I, thank you. I oh, just want to congratulate you on that silk milk project. I never ever thought <laughs> that would be. I so. know. And I, I love the from the Matt Stoffers gym to the restaurants to everything that's happening. Well, I have to thank the county. Uh, you were one of the supporters that voted for the KOZ. It's a tough thing to vote for. It took me four tries at the Apple with um, the believed. school district. And the gentleman, um, Bob Muscaitis, is a chemist who worked across the street at Minerals Technology. And he was against it, against it, against it. And when we finally had a developer who, if we got the KOZ, would do the project, he said, are you assuring me? I said, I am telling you as I'm here that I can assure you that this will be developed. And before you retire, you will see. And he just retired from Mintech. So he, was, he had lunch at the Tucker Cafe and stuff and loves it. So he lives in Forks Township. He'll be down several times, he said. It is a great project. It really helps out the city's westward. Going to put a bridge across the creek. The yes, we are. It's a pedestrian. The, the, the we have a pedestrian bridge that's already been. Uh, the developer will be putting that in hopefully this summer or late next or early next year. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. So we would be looking for a recommendation from this committee uh, for the ordinance, uh, which is on your agenda this evening, for the LERDA. Oh, for the LERDA. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I'll make a recommendation, okay. Mr. Chairman. Sure. Uh, second? Give me a second. I'll second. Somebody from the committee? I would You're on the committee? Oh, I apologize. There's everybody's here. It's, it's everybody's second. here. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay, so move. Um, the last thing in your packets that was handed out 
was a um, Northampton County DCED 2017 highlights. Um, this is meant to be an overview of um, the department's work, uh, particular. Which one? Uh, looks like. What do we put the red guys? Oh, okay. It's the last one in the package. Oh, okay. Um, so this goes over our various grant competitive grant programs that the department administers over the year and so in 2017 we awarded 2.3 million dollars and when I say awarded usually when we go through our grant selection process um, so you got the schedule for this year we're mm -hmm. selecting projects the projects aren't completed until or started to work on until the following year so that's when the funds are dispersed so we've awarded 2.3 million dollars and then uh, dispersed 4.4 million dollars typically our preferred method of disbursement is on invoice or um, reimbursement mm -hmm. so then there's no doubt that they did the work they've submitted some documentation to us and we're just fulfilling our commitment to them can I ask a question sure absolutely so I noticed that uh, table games revenue and uh, the gaming authority is on here these projects so is it your committee that uh, the economic development that uh, disperses that money because I know that's something that's going to be on our agenda Correct. tonight so, so, so if you could explain yeah, that yes. Yes. that would be so, awesome so um, when, when I say disperse we run processes to uh, solicit proposals for mm -hmm. projects we vet and review them and then make recommendations on what proposals council ultimately says we're gonna fund yeah, this project or that project mm -hmm. um, but we, we, we try to do the legwork and make that easier for you um, so your question was who or does our depart so our department oversees the tape the table games right. budget is within our department so okay. any money that goes out um, from our budget has a contract and then we're responsible for administering that contract okay um, but you typically sign off on the scope award. okay so ultimately we would award whatever projects you bring to us that you've already vetted so the money for 2017 has been collected already but those projects haven't necessarily been gone correct to correct so we still have to do this right correct right okay. now we are um, most of them are under agreement mm -hmm. and they're probably in various stages of you know bidding the work so do you already have projects lined up for that money so that will be dispersed accordingly depending Correct. on what the, we the funds that were awarded mm -hmm. will be dispersed over the course of this year and some of them run into next year okay because I am kind of jumping the gun a little bit by so so um, so as an example in the table games budget this mm -hmm. year there's eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars budgeted for SIP projects Mm -hmm. under future grants mm -hmm. so when we go out and put out our funding announcement to say hey uh, nonprofits and um, municipalities submit your projects to us um, that's what we'll be awarding so can you give an example like, of, of a project just uh, I could be anything from a municipal Building renovation, okay. Center for Animal Health That's and Welfare, Center for That's Sliding Board Health and <laughs> Animal okay. Welfare. Um, we've funded streetscape improvement projects, um, so you're putting in banners and um, benches and trash cans okay. and things like that. Okay, I just wanted to know generally what it. W Thank you. I mm -hmm. it. Excuse me, but Mark. That, that's the, the the revenue the table games that goes through you but that's not the only source of revenue coming from the casino no they have the game correct there that's right so there's there's okay, slots, I just there, to there's be slots revenue yeah um, now that in the past has been was distributed by the gaming authority going forward that will be 
distributed like it is throughout the rest of the state to the Commonwealth um, Finance Authority. Yeah, CFA. I, I just CFA. To make, yeah. So um, we've had some pass-through grants. Uh, it's called the Monroe County Local Share Program. Okay. Um, we've had a couple of grants um, that slots money from Monroe County. Okay. So they're they're creating programs like that for uh, Northampton County. Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> I have a question. <laughs> sure. Go ahead, Ms. Farrell. I have a question before we adjourn. Um, the 2017 hotel tax, I've had calls from a couple people who were given grants. One was Da Vinci for the, I think, 250000 The other one was uh, Bruce Haynes was here with uh, the Bethlehem marketing for the Bethlehem um, project. Oh, wow. And I'm wondering to you know sure. that those funds have been dispersed. They, uh, Good evening, Good Mrs. Farrar. It's so Mr. nice Mr. to be in the same room with you. Um, the flattery will get the, you nowhere. The, the, <laughs> the um, with respect to the money in the budget for Da Vinci, it's right. still there, and uh, Miss Smith it, it has been in communication with Miss Erickson about that money. Okay. And what we have told her, and correct me if I'm wrong, Tina, is that when you have invoices, we've had meetings with the mayor. For okay, instance. you want invoices? Yes, with respect to architects we've, we've talked to her because they is the mayor still here he's they, right there they have some uh, expenses with respect to architecture is that right yeah so we'll be helping them with that through okay. the process the money will be coming what about the one for the um the unesco Bethlehem the world heritage, heritage initiative world yeah heritage yeah that project. is really exciting I mean, yes if it bethlehem is. gets a world heritage designation that will mean so much to the economy of Bethlehem and to Northampton County. We can't, we can't even begin to appreciate that. Uh, so the grant that uh, Mr. Haynes and, and Ms. Donches mowers uh, came and uh, got from the county last year, $200,000, right. um, we have reached an agreement with Historic Bethlehem and Mr. Haynes okay. uh, to split the money, 100000 to a marketing initiative Okay. that I believe is tied to the Hotel Bethlehem with respect to World Heritage Initiative, okay. and the other 100000 will go to the World Heritage Initiative to move that uh, process forward, which is I, very important. I want us to have our fingers in it. Yes. Well, thank you. Well, I'm on the, I was just appointed to the World Heritage Initiative Board by the mayor. So I will. Oh, I've he's got, smart, got, man. <laughs> yeah, so we'll be in that. Is, is that good? Is okay. That, okay, thank you. Okay. Anything else, Ms. Smith? Mr. Hardy? Okay. Thank you. Anybody else have any comments? Motion to adjourn. You're so funny, Ken. Oh, my God. I have to check my blind spots out. I know. Hey, I'm on oh, economic okay. development. I'm sorry. You know what I got yelled at right. last time? Because somebody made a motion and they weren't on the committee. Oh, I know.